By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a best of five match between two dominantly red decks. My opponent is a friend of the show, Yoop Buck, and he's bringing a mono red deck to the table full of cool cards. Like, I can't wait to show you the deck tech. And for uh, returning viewers, you have seen this deck before and uh, it was a treat. So I'm really looking forward to play against this deck again. And I'm playing also with a deck that has red in it, but also a little bit of black. And I'm playing a deck called Orch Quake. And yes, this deck has Fallen Empires in it because I'm playing this match uh, for a preparation for a tournament where they are going to celebrate 30 years of Fallen Empires. So I've decided to make a deck with Fallen Empires in it. And uh, it's just fun, you know, Org 6-6 Trampler for five. What's not to love about this big boy? And I've built a deck around it. So in the deck decks, I'm going to show you uh, all the ins and outs about my deck Org Quake. Now, before we start with the deck decks, first a message from the sponsor of this video, 3 for one Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old-school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 341 Trading for sponsoring this video. And now let's continue with the deck decks. We're gonna start with the deck of my opponent, Yupvak. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Yup. So this is mono red, but I mean, there are a lot of fun cards in here. Usually when I play against mono red, it's all about the burn. And there is burn in here, don't get me wrong. We've got chain lightning, lightning bolt, fireball, why does everybody want to toast me all the time? I feel like I'm playing a lot against burn decks lately. But anyway, um, there are also some really cool cards that I want to highlight. And the first cards that kind of stand out here are the four deserts in the deck. I think in this matchup, the desert is not going to be very uh, useful. But in other matchup, it, matchups, it's really been an all-star. So desert is a land from Arabian Nights. You can tap it for one mana, but you can also tap it to deal one damage to target attacking creature after it has dealt damage. So this card is really good against like Savannah Lines or, you know, um, Elvish Archers, Argovian Pixies, like all those creatures with one toughness or two toughness that are usually in very aggressive decks. So the Desert is, is quite handy. And remember, you can still tap it for mana, so it's still useful. There's another land in here also from Arabian Nights that doesn't tap for mana, and that is Diamond Valley. And Diamond Valley is a card that you can tap to sack a creature Gain life equal to the toughness of that creature. And that card works together quite well with Disharmony. And Disharmony is an instant from Legends for one red and two that um, you can cast when your opponent is attacking, so only during combat. And then you can take over an attacking creature of choice, untap it on your side of the board so you can use it as a blocker. So for example, if I would attack in this game with two orcs, he can take over an orc, block the two orcs on each other, and it's a really good two for one. But it also works together quite well, of course, with the Diamond Valley because... If I only attack with one creature, he can still steal it with his Disharmony, then sack it to the Diamond Valley and gain some life, which is pretty sweet. Now, um, I have to mention here that I believe Yoop is always tinkering with this list. So I think he put in some Icy Manipulators and some other cards. The main idea of the deck remains the same, but he's always like kind of changing, sometimes also putting Rock Hydras in there, for example. So I'm just curious to see if this is going to be the list or if he's put some other cards in it. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, another really nice card I want to discuss here is Knowledge Vault. Knowledge Vault is an artifact from Legends for four. You can play it and two and tap, and then you can exile the top card of your library, put it under the Knowledge Vault face down. So you haven't seen it, that's important. Then you can sacrifice the Knowledge Vault at any time, and then you get the cards that you've exiled with the Knowledge Vault, but you have to discard your hand. Now, it is quite nice because two mana is a lot cheaper than a Gem Day Tome to activate. So it's kind of a way to indirectly draw cards. And usually with a red deck like this, your hand will be empty pretty quickly and then you can refill it with your Knowledge Vault. So I'm really, I'm kind of liking Knowledge Vault. It's one of those cards whenever I play against it, I'm like, oh yeah, it's actually kind of good. And one of the main things I like about the design is the fact that if you disenchant it, what you can do in response is you can pay to tap it, put a card under it, then you can sack it, right? And then you still get always get that extra card because you don't have to tap and sack it. You just have to pay zero and sacrifice the artifact. So um, you can still have that response where you get that extra card from the top. That kind of makes a big difference for me. If it would have been tap and sack, 
the card would be a lot less strong in, in my opinion. But I think it's really useful. And I always enjoy seeing players playing with these cards. So they have kind of a chance to shine and get out there and maybe give other players ideas of playing this as well. I mean, and also look at that art. That art alone is a reason enough to play this beauty. Beautiful art by Amy Weber. Um, when we're looking at the creature base of this deck, we kind of see very aggressive creatures, right? Ironclaw Orc, uh, Juggernaut, you know, those are like your classical aggressive creatures. We also see a Granite Gargoyle, another card that works really well with the Diamond Valley. Then we see a single Sheevan and a single Dragon Whelp in the deck as well. So I think it's looking like a strong deck, but I'm a little, I mean, I'm worried about all that burn because you can just die very quickly. But the thing that I'm really confident is about is the fact that I'm playing with a lot of six toughness creatures and it's going to be really tough for you to deal with those creatures. Um, talking about that, let's take a look at my list, Orch Quake. And here we see my deck, Orch Quake. And as you can see, the deck has cards from Fallen Empires in it. Uh, this is a deck that I designed to play at the Zombie Cup because at the Zombie Cup, they were celebrating the 30 year anniversary of Fallen Empires. So you are allowed to play with Fallen Empires. So I thought, you know what? Let's go play with Orcs, because it's, it's a really cool creature. And um, that's kind of the starting point of this deck. So maybe first look at Orc when we discuss the rest of the deck. So Orc is a 6-6 Trampler for 2 red and 3. So far the good news. Now comes the bad news, the downside of the card. Uh, Orc cannot attack if defending player controls an untapped creature with power 3 or greater. And Orc cannot block creatures with power 3 or greater. And then it has hilarious flavor text that says it's bigger than it thinks. And when you look at the art... Um, you know, the orch is in the background, you know, that's a big boy, but the little doggy at the front, that's actually what the orch thinks he is. So he thinks he's just a little dog, but he's actually a huge 6-6 six, six trampling monster. Um, now, what you want to do when you play with orch, you want to turn it sideways and attack. So I was looking for ways to make the creatures of my opponent smaller or to tap them down. And then I ended up with adding black to the deck because that gives me access to paralyze and weakness. Weakness is an enchant creature, a card that I think is kind of underestimated. It gives any creature, so it doesn't matter if it's black or an artifact, minus two, minus one. And we're playing, of course, in a meta with a lot of four-powered creatures. Sarah Angel, you know, Suchis, Sengir Vampires. Uh, we've got a lot of Surrender Pafrits. Put a weakness on there, and all of a sudden, I can now attack again with my Orch, you know? And another card that's really useful with Orch is, of course, Paralyze, because Paralyze is an enchant creature, that taps the creature down. So, and remember, when we're looking at how the orc works, it cannot attack if defending player controls an untapped creature. So Paralyze is really gonna help me to tap down those creatures. Then I also have two icy manipulators to do some tapping as well. And that's especially nice if you tap down a creature that already has a Paralyze on it. So that's kind of the start of the deck. And then I, I started going through my binder and I saw it win a freed. I recently got a full playset of the Ifrit's and this is a really good card. It's a 3-6 from Arabian Nights that when it blocks, if you want to block with it, you've got to um, flip a coin. And if the coin ends in your favor, it blocks. If it doesn't, it doesn't block and it becomes tapped. But who cares about blocking anyway? This is three power for three red mana, six toughness, so really difficult to kill. And I can just turn it sideways and attack with it. And it really fits the mana curve of this deck, right? I can just turn three with the, with the mana base as well. I can probably most of the time play out my Itwin, which is just great bang for your buck. And then I had two six toughness creatures and I thought, wait a minute, if I've got two six toughness creatures, let's add Earthquake because Earthquake deals X damage to each non-flying creature and each player. And you know, my creatures have six toughness, so I can basically wipe the board, my creatures will survive and I can then attack with them straight away. So it's kind of a win-win situation. And then from Earthquake came the idea to add in Rook X because Rook X goes together quite well with Earthquake. And then when I had Rook X and Itwin Ifrit, I thought, hey, let's add my Diamond Valley. And I actually wanted to add more Diamond Valleys, but I only own one copy. So it's just the one. But if I would have two, I would definitely play two here. Not more, I think, because you got to think about the mana base. But two is quite, quite good. Um, and yeah, I also decided to go for Fisher in this deck. I, I orig originally played with um, Stone Rain, but then I thought, wait a minute, with this deck, it's going quite slow, like the early stages of the game. If my opponent has an aggressive deck, I'm going to play my Weakness, my Paralyze, my Lightning Bolts, and then later in the game, or my Shatters, of course, and I have my Earthquakes to deal with it. So later in the game, I want to have my Fisher to maybe deal with bigger creatures or to deal with lands, like a Maze of It, for example. 
because that of course is a really good card against my bigger creatures. So that was my, my thought process about it. And I think in general that Fisher is a little bit underestimated. Yes, it is five to cast, but I mean, it's instant speed and it gives you an option, just like Disenchant. You can choose, do you want to go for a land or a creature, which I think is pretty good. Um, of course, one of the problems with this deck is that I don't have any way to deal with enchantments. Uh, and that's why I've got Nevenerals Discs in the sideboard. So if my opponent go is going to play, for example, a COP Red, which is a serious problem for this deck, I would have my, my Nevenerals Discs. I only have two in the side. Maybe I should have played more in the sideboard. I think if I would make it again, I would probably try to play with at least three in the sideboard. But of course, I also have a Demonic Tutor uh, to look it up. So yeah, this is the deck. Um, it looks like a lot of fun. And I guess we're now going to find out if it's actually a lot of fun because we are gonna go to the match. Enjoy. Game number one, here we go. On the left, Yubvak with a mono red. And I'm on the play on the right side, playing my Org Quake deck. So it's uh, black and red. And it is a best of five battle here. So sit back and enjoy the ride, starting here with the two Dwarven Ruins. The Sackland from Fallen Empire comes into play tapped. You will see an Ironclaw Orc being played out by Yoop. Let's see what I can do. There's a Mountain. So maybe an Itwin a free tier turn 3, that would be quite nice. 3-6 from Arabian Nights, playing a full playset of those. Ooh, Sacking, so paying 4 in total. There's a Rook Egg. So sacking the ruins for double red to play that rook egg. So that's of course a good blocker for the iron claw orcs. I wonder if I have uh, a bigger plan with that egg. You want it to go to the graveyard of course, because then you get a 4-4 flying bird token in your end step. There is a uh, granite gargoyle from the side of you, 2-2 two -two flyer, play one red, give it plus O plus one. There's a diamond valley. Okay, probably had the diamond valley in hand. So that means I can sack it to the valley, gain some life. So deciding not to do it straight away, that surprises me a little bit because then I would have had a, a blocker for, um, for the gargoyle. And of course, Yupo stepped out, so then he cannot respond with the bolt, for example. Gonna tap four here. There's a juggernaut. So now, of course, I can use the egg to block the juggernaut next turn. That could be an option. I wonder if he's going to swing in here with the Granite Gargoyle. That seems a sensible thing to do, exactly. So he's going to put me on 18. And then in his uh, main phase, I'm going to sack it, gain 3, go back up to 21. And then get a 4-4 flyer in his end step. It's important to note that you get it at the beginning of, your, of the uh, next end step. So you have to do it in his own main phase. If you do it in his end step, then you have to wait all the way until your own beginning of your end step, if you can still follow. So it's a little thing you got to keep in mind. So now I've got a 4-4 Flying Bird token. There's a, a Bat Lance, so I can tap it for black and for red. A dual land. So let's see what else I can do. Looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here, trying to figure out what the best move is. I mean, I know I'm going to have to deal with a Juggernaut that's incoming, so I wonder if I have a plan for that. I play, of course, with End Shatter's main, and I play with uh, Lightning Bolts. Look at me go attacking. You're pretty aggressive, so I'm going to put Jupe, I think, here on 16. He's completely tapped out, and his only flyer, the Gargoyle, is tapped. Tapping the Badlands. Okay, playing a weakness here. I wonder what I'm going to put the weakness on. Passing the turn, so... We'll just have to wait and see. Perhaps playing a weakness on the Gargoyle, that would make it a 0-1. Uh, a I wonder if I have a Shatter to deal with the incoming Juggernaut. And here we see Yoop also playing out of Diamond Valley. So both of us are playing with Diamond Valleys. There's the attack. Also going with the Iron Claw. Yeah, so I think I changed. Uh, I made the... Oh, there's a Shatter on the Juggernaut. So I think the weakness is on the Gargoyle. And the Shatter here, of course, 
on the Juggernaut. Now he can sack it, gain some life. So he's going to gain three. And I'm going to take two damage from the Iron Claw. So I'm going to go to 19. And Yupa's going to go back up to 19. So we're both on 19. Three cards in my hand at the moment. And taking my turn. Untap, upkeep, draw. Let's see what I can do. I would love to just swing in here. Let's see if Yupa is going to block on the Granite Gargoyle. He is going to block. Remember, it's just an 0 1 because of the weakness. He's also going to deal a damage to it. Uh oh, is there a bolt incoming? So, dealing a damage with Desert. And that's, of course, uh, good in combination with Lightning Bolt. So, the Gargoyle dies. So, the weakness is out of the game again. Going to tap 4 for another Rook Egg. These Rook Eggs are pretty good. Two cards in hand. There's the Bolt. On the 4-4 uh, Flyer, I assume, because it already had one damage marked on it. So that means it's going to die. So really nice here to see that synergy between Desert and Bolt. I've also done that before with the Protocol Sorcerer and the Lightning Bolt. That's also a nice combination. Passing to turn again. So not sacking in main. Going to keep it here. There's another Desert. And I think one of the reasons not to already turn it into a 4-4 flyer is that um, if he attacks and I then block it on my 4-4, and if he then has, so I'm going to block it here, if he then has a lightning bolt, you know, he could kill my 4-4 flyer. And now I can just really safely block it on the egg. I don't have to worry about that. Tapping the desert here for a soul ring. So just lots of mana here for Yupa at the moment. Not quite sure how many cards he's got in hand. So on the end of his second main, I'm going to sack it here. Going to gain three more life. So going to go up to 22. And then in his end step, I'm going to get the 4-4 flyer. So yeah, things are looking quite good for me now. Three cards in hand, I believe, after the draw, playing a land for turn. So back to two. Attacking for four here. Going to put Jupe on 15. Now remember, this is just the first game, and this is a best of five. So passing to turn back here, Iron Claw Orc gets untapped. There's the attack, taking some damage, going to go to 20. But I mean, this is a great race for me. He's dealing two, I'm dealing four. I'm fine with this scenario. Like if he can find a, th a fourth desert, he could actually kill my bird. <laughs> that would be problematic. There's the attack. What am I going to do second main? It win afraid. There he is, the three six from Arabian Nights. And if you want to block with it, you've got to flip a coin, and your opponent calls heads or tails. If your opponent wins, it taps itself and doesn't block. But you don't have to do that when you attack, and that's quite important. So I can just attack with a three six for three. And of course, it's also great with Diamond Valley because of that six toughness. So it's looking pretty bad for you here. Like a Sheevan Dragon would be quite good right now if you could just play a Sheevan. He's playing with one, I believe, main. But like I said, he's always tweaking with this deck, so maybe he's added some extra Sheevans. Who knows? Attacking here with the Iron Claw Orc. I mean, I kind of feel like it's safe for me to block. I would take two damage to the Eight Wind of Freed. I've got to, of course, roll the dice or flip a coin to see if it can block. Just taking the damage though, gonna drop to 18, not taking a risk here. Now he's gonna sack it, he's gonna gain life. I wonder what he's gonna do. He's gonna go up to 13. Gonna tap seven. Ooh, earthquake! Yeah, that's quite nice. So in response, of course, I'm gonna sack and gain six. Then take seven damage, so I'm gonna go to seven. To 17, but this is pretty disastrous for you, Pierre. Gonna take six himself. But he's kind of forced to do to do something, or else he's just gonna take three extra damage from the it win. So now he's on seven. He's, he basically has two turns here. It's gonna go to three. Do I have some kind of burn to finish it? Playing with two lightning bolts main. There's another it win to free. Yeah, I'm just 
I'm drawing the right cards here. This is really tough for you. Three life. Probably his last turn here in game. Number one. Let's see if he can find something. There's a strip mine. So yeah, he can, he can strip the valley here, but the valley already did its work. There's an Iron Claw Orc. And I mean, Diamond Valley is so good against all these, these burn center decks. They, they just, it's a true miracle worker. Like if there's one thing that direct damage decks don't like is when you've got life gain in your deck. It's really tough for them to, to beat that. And now, of course, um, I mean, I can just attack with both or just fly over with the Rook, get the victory. Not quite sure why I'm in doubt. I mean, Yupon 3 seems uh, that I've got this game in the bag. Attacking with both. He's going to eat it up, going to go to 5. I mean, he could declare it as a blocker, then eat it up, I think. That would have given him an extra turn. But anyway, he was, he was done for. Even with that extra turn, he probably wouldn't have made it. So game number one here, going to Orkquake. And we haven't seen a single Orc. So I'm hoping that in the remainder of this match, we're going to see an Orc. Now, do remember, it is a best of five. So this is just the first game. And now we're going to shuffle up and we're going to go to game number two. Game number two, here we go. Yoop, of course, on the play after losing the first game. Remember, it is a best of five. So we've got all the time in the world. Let's see what he can do. A mountain and pass turn. I believe we both kept our first seven. There's a Dwarven Ruins again. So the tap land that you can sack for two red or tap for one red. It's quite useful. I especially like the blue one because then you always have counter magic online if you just keep that one untapped. You will see a quick strip mine though. So losing the land, have to rebuild here. Badlands hitting the board, passing the turn. There's a desert and an iron claw, I guess. Yep, iron claw orcs is back. The 2 2. There is a mountain on my side of the board. Don't really have anything going for me in the early stages. Like, I could play like Paralyze, Weakness, Bolt, cards like that, but I don't really have any creatures to play out this early in the game or any enchantments or artifacts. There's the attack. Gonna drop here to 18. And taking on my turn. Now, if I can find a second red, I could potentially play an Idwin. Or my third red source, I should say. Anyway, there's a Swamp. Yeah, and a Mox Ruby. So I've got four. Is there a Rook Egg, perhaps? No, there's a Icy Manipulator instead. So four mana to cast, one and tap. Quick uh, Shatter, though. Taking care of business. I think Icy is really like one of my favorite artifacts because of the uh, versatility. Like you can also tap lands and it's actually quite relevant in a lot of cases, but you can also just take out a creature as well. Here we see a Juggernaut hitting the board. By the way, that's a problem for me. Hopefully I have an answer. Already on 16 after taking four from that uh, attack by the Iron Claw Orcs. So next turn he's got seven damage on the board. So a Rook Egg of course would be great because I can... Then chump the Juggernaut with the Rook Egg and get a 4-4 Flyer in return. An Earthquake here would also be quite good. Just Earthquake for 3, taking care of the uh, creatures on the side of Yoop. So I have some options. So really in the tank here. Tapping a black. Okay, a weakness. I wonder what I'm going to play the weakness on. That's a bit annoying with these games. I don't have any audio at the moment, so we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, I think I would play it on the Juggernaut, right? Because then you would turn it into a 3-2. Uh, a that would at least save me two points of damage. He's going to tap four. There's his own Icy Manipulator. There's the attack with the Juggernaut. Oh, and there's a Shatter. So I guess I played the weakness on the Iron Claw Orcs, which is now then an 0-1 creature. Basically doing nothing. And that was because I had the Shatter. So played the Shatter on the Juggernaut, but that means I didn't have the, the Shatter anymore for the uh, 
I see manipulator going to tap four here, going to tap five. Are we going to see an org? Yeah, there's the org. Six, six, trample, baby. The problem, though, is that this org can get tapped by the IC manipulator exactly. So it's not going to do much. That is unfortunate. Yeah, I wonder if I should have played that Shatter then on the uh, the Juggernaut. But yeah, five damage to take is a lot. And of course, I played that weakness on the Iron Claw before I knew about the Icy. Thinking that I would uh, take care of the Juggernaut with the Shatter. But yeah, now I've used that Shatter up. And that Icy is a big problem here. Going to tap a red. There's a Soul Ring pass turn. And I play with, I believe, okay, he's going to eat up the Iron Claw, by the way. I play, I believe, with three Shatters. So there's still two more Shatters in the deck to try to take care of that Icy Manipulator. But yeah, as long as Joop can just tap down uh, the Orc, he's at least safe. But he's unable to find any more pressure, it seems. Just passing the turn here back to me. Tapping four. Okay, and there we see a Rook Egg. I mean, a Rook Egg can't really do anything at the moment. Passing the turn back here to Yoop. He's going to play out a Soul Ring. Two cards for me, three cards for my opponent. And he just passes the turn. Of course, tapping down the Orc again. I really just want to smash face with the Orc. That's the whole idea of the deck. Attacking with the egg. No idea why. Maybe just because they can. There's another Diamond Valley here. So two Diamond Valleys in the deck of Yoop. And am I going to do something end step here? Tapping five. Oh, there's a Fisher here on my own creature. So that makes sure I'm going to get a 4-4 four, four flyer. And now Yoop has to choose. Of course, he's probably, you know, most likely going to tap down the Orc. Because, you know, it's the difference between taking 6 or 4 damage. But now I'm in business. Now I can start at least dealing some damage. So attacking with the bird. Oh, he's using the desert. Oh, no. Are we going to see another bolt? One damage marked down. There's the bolt. I mean, at least he takes 4. Because remember, you use desert after you've taken the damage. But um, yeah, Desert is really showing uh, its w uh, value here. I won't say wealth, but value in uh, in game one and here in game two. With that combination of Desert and Lightning Bolt, you can take out a lot of 4-4 uh, creatures. So basically, Desert, you could say, makes your Bolt better. Right? I think that's a safe conclusion to make here. And uh, you drawing another card for turn. I mean, he's, he's doing a good job at stabilizing. He's doing a pretty bad job at pressuring me. Like he needs a juggernaut or, you know, a whelp. Just something to put some pressure on my life. And I mean, this is also going to be a tough match for me, I think, because of the double diamond valley. So it's probably just going to gain a lot of life here. Oh, look at me go also having a diamond valley. That is funny. So I want to attack. He's probably going to tap it down. Yeah. Passing the turn. We're kind of top decking here. What I'm worried about is that maybe Yoop has a fireball in hand and he's like, okay, I'm just going to play out a land pass, play out a land pass until I have so many lands. So in that, in that regard, this Diamond Valley for him is also a bit of a problem because if he plays a huge fireball, obviously I'm going to sack my orc to the Diamond Valley to gain life. At the moment, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six lands plus that seven. What's he going to do for seven? Fireball here. So I think I'm playing a fireball for six, right? So I'm on nine. Tapping down the orc, of course. Do I have a rook egg here? Okay, there's another rook egg. So I could sack the egg. I think I should do it now. Just do it main. Sack the egg, go up to 12. I mean, I keep waiting with that sack into the valley, but I kind of feel when Yoop stepped out, that's kind of a safe moment for me because he cannot respond to the sack. Anyway, deciding not to. And now he's counting his mana again. Maybe he's got 
two fireballs in hand. I mean, this is scary stuff. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think it can. Does he have enough? It's hard for me to see. Let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. He's got ten mana. But of course, I've got the Diamond Valley. So if he plays, he can play a Fireball for nine if he taps out completely. But then I can hit him for six. And of course, I've got the Diamond Valley. So I can definitely survive a Fireball for, for nine. Gonna tap one. Okay, there's a Chain Lightning. That is scary stuff. What I could do now, I can use the Chain to kill my own Rook Egg. The question is, do I want to? Gonna go to six. I guess I don't. I guess I want a second to the valley to go three back up again. So now I'm on six. I mean, it's it's getting concerning here because he can now play a fireball for for eight. Oh, he keeps counting. This is scary stuff. Tapping. Oh, he's gonna keep two open. So this is a fireball for six. Does he have a bolt into response? So in response, I'm gonna sack. Oh, I'm gonna sack the orc. Look at me go. I'm gonna go for safety here. I'm really worried that if I don't do it, then he's gonna respond with maybe a bolt and I'm still dead. Okay, so I'm on six. Now I really have to sack the uh, the egg, I feel. Yeah, going to sack the egg. Going to go back up to nine if he doesn't do anything. It looks like he's not. So going to get my 4-4 my four, four flyer on the end step. Looks like I want to do something else as well. Six cards in hand. I mean, I need to take care of that icy still. There's the 4-4 four, four passing the turn. Like basically, when you put the 4-4 in the game, it means that you've entered your end step. Because sometimes players immediately get the token. But that's technically not correct because the token happens in your end step. So if you, if you slam the token on the table, you're basically saying it's your turn. Tapping three. What are we going to see for three? Okay, there's a Granite Gargoyle. I mean, that can do work as well, as long as you pass that Icy. Seven cards in hand. Please give me a Shatter to take care of this Icy Manipulator. Tapping down the, ice, uh, the, the Bird here with the Icy. There's a Weakness. Okay, so that makes it into an O one. one In response, you could, of course, say... I'm going to sack it here, but I guess why would you? Because you can still block with it. You can pump it up pretty big. So playing a weakness. So the Gargoyle is now an 0-1 flying creature that you can still pump for one red. You can give a plus 0-1. Plus Tapping five. Okay, are we going to see another org? Yeah, another org, baby. 6-6 six, six powerhouse, but I mean that the problem now remains because he's gonna tap down You know my orc or you know, maybe the bird next turn and he's got so much red mana He, he can block for days with that gargoyle I mean this is this is a big problem Untapping here What can I do? Five cards in hand. Tapping a black. Paralyzed, perhaps? Okay, playing a paralyze. <laughs> oh, man. Wasting so many enchant creatures on one creature. That feels pretty bad. He can untap it next turn. But at least I can deal some damage here. Swinging in for four. Oh, no, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you going to kill it again? He is going to kill it again. Of course, I'm going to eat it in response. So I'm going to gain four. We're in for a long game too here. It is, it is so tough. We both have these Diamond Valleys. We're both netting a lot of life. 
We're really playing the control game. Okay, ooh, here's an icy from my side. This could be the change. But then again, you can still block the um, orc with his gargoyle. He's got so much mana. Question one, is he going to untap? I think he is. Yeah, he's going to untap. I mean, one of the things I could do is tap the icy end step. Then when it's my turn, tap his gargoyle and then attack with the 6-6. Six, six. It looks like he's going to pass turn here. So I'm just going to tap down the icy. And I'm going to untap. Now it's my turn. So I, I could potentially at least deal 6. I mean, he's on 13. So 6 damage almost halves his life. That's not nothing. I think one of the hardest things when I was designing Orquake, and I'm still not done with the deck, is like you wanted to play with cards like Howl from Beyond, for example, but you've got to make space for those cards. Another one! <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So now it's an O1, so it's going to die eventually. I mean, it wasn't O1, so with the weakness, it's going to die. So what he does now in response, he's going to pump it and sack it to the Diamond Velos. He's going to gain a lot of life. He's back up to 20. But now it might be going quite fast because if I can keep this up, I can just swing in for six every time. But look at that. I've wasted three cards on one gargoyle. Like, that's not what my deck wants to do, by the way. That's not the design to waste three cards on a gargoyle. But sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. Now I've got four cards in hand. And I can tap down the IC of Yoop with my IC and then I can swing in again. I can put him on eight. He only has two cards in hand. That's not a lot, actually. I was expecting him to have more cards in hand. But look at that. I think I forgot to tap down the Icy. That's a pretty big mistake. That's going to cost me six damage. I basically gave my opponent here six life. That's pretty bad. So I want to attack. He's going to tap, I assume. Exactly. I know, I'm not sure why I'm untapping the Auric, by the way, because it's now, it should be tapped still. Oh, he's tapping the Diamond Valley. That is interesting. He's tapping the Diamond Valley, not the Auric. What is he planning to do? Oh, look at this. He's playing a Disharmony, of course. I keep... Whenever I play against this deck, I keep forgetting about the disharmonies. On the other hand, like if you you cannot really play against it, you know what I mean. I, of course, you can decide just to attack with one instead of two creatures, so at least it cannot be a two for one. But you cannot constantly think, oh, maybe he does this. Or wait a minute, what am I going to do in response to the disharmony? Oh, there's a fish. Okay, what I can do is fisher one of the diamond valleys, tap down the other diamond valley. Oh, that is pretty cool. So Fisher is an instant from the dark, right? Two red and three that says a destroy target land or bury target creature. So I'm destroying the land, tapping down the other Diamond Valley, which means that he gets control of the orc, but his Diamond Valley's one is tapped, one is destroyed. So he can no longer eat it up. He cannot do his trick. So it's still going to save him six points of damage, right? Don't get me wrong, but he's not gaining any life and I get my orc back. So, wow. That was pretty cool. There we see an Arabian Nights Mountain, by the way, being dropped by Yoop. So yeah, basically all that this Harmony really did was, was making sure that he didn't get that extra point of damage, extra six points of damage, so kind of like a fog effect. There's a mountain. Yeah, and of course I'm going to declare my attack step again. I mean, the thing with this Harmony, what I wanted to say is you can't, cannot really, you know, play around it that much. You still want to keep attacking with your creatures. You could, of course, decide to just attack with one creature at a time instead of with two. There we see the Gargoyle. Oh, man. This, this game is going to take so long. That Gargoyle is like a stream of life. So I'm going to tap down the Icy on end step here. Now I could tap down the Gargoyle. Okay, playing a Paralyzed. That's actually pretty good. You can swing in for six. That's something. Going to put him on 8, I think. Okay, he's on 8. 
I mean, I'm getting there. Slowly, I'm getting there. So going through my hand, I think, looks like I've got a lot of options because I'm in the tank here. Passing the turn back here to Yoop. Does he want to untap the gargoyle? I'm sure, I'm sure you do, right? It's so good on this board for Yoop with so many uh, red mana. He can make it so big. There's an Iron Claw Orc. A card I'm not really that worried about. Of course, it is too life for Yoop. He can always sack into the valley. Yeah, what could I do here on end step? Like, I could... Guess I could tap down the IC again and... Oh, look at this. I'm actually tapping down the Diamond Valley. Does that mean that I've got some way of taking care of the uh, uh, Granite Gargoyle here? So untapping. I mean, this is interesting. Attacking for six. He's gonna blow. Oh, he's gonna tap the Orc. Okay, that makes sense. Tapping a lot. Are we gonna see a huge earthquake perhaps? Okay, eating my own orc first. Yeah, I think this is going to be an earthquake. Yep, there's the earthquake. And the diamond valley is tapped, so that's why I tapped that diamond valley. So that's an earthquake for seven. Yeah, there's a bolt. Nothing really he can do. Oh, actually, it's... Yeah, it is an earthquake for eight, exactly. I thought it has seven. No, it's an earthquake exactly for eight, or else it wouldn't be lethal. So, uh, you here uh, losing game two as well, but don't worry, don't fret. I like the word fret. Don't fret, my friends, because this is a best of five. So, even though I've got two games in, if you can uh, win the next game, we still have a real match on our hands. So, 0 2 for now. But, like I said, it's a best of five. So, we're going to go to game number three. Game number three. Here we go. So, uh, two games for me here. I believe you took a mulligan here. Starting with a mountain passing the turn. So he really needs to win this one to stay in it. It's going to be tough though for him. It's a best of five. Are we going to see another Iron Claw Orc turn two? No, we're not by Yoop. Just a pass. There's a Badlands. Passing the turn. There's a mountain. And just a pass. So both of us just playing out our lands. Not doing much. Are we going to see an Itwin here turn three by me taking a damage? From my own city of brass. There's the Itwin Efreet 3 6. Six cards in hand passing the turn. So some pressure on the board. And it's such a tough creature to deal with. You know, six toughness. Ooh, here we see a Knowledge Vault. So one of the cards I'm a big fan of. Really cool card. Two and tap. Put a card under it. You can sack it. And then you get the cards that you've uh, placed under the Knowledge Vault. But you do have to discard your hand. Playing another tap land from Fallen Empires, attacking for three. Yoop now on 17. No follow up though, just passing the turn, so giving him some time. No extra pressure. Tapping three here. There's a gargoyle. Those are pretty good as well. 2 2 flyer, and you can pump it plus one, plus, uh, plus zero, plus one, I mean. We've been seeing that gargoyle doing a pretty good work. There's a shatter on the knowledge vault. So five in hand, draw for turn. I'm going to go up to six again. And uh, I mean, I could attack with the Itwin, but Yoop has enough mana. I am going to attack it though. Wonder if that means that I have a bolt in hand. So three damage marked on the gargoyle. Yep, there's the bolt taking care of business. And do I have a follow up here? Tapping two. Ooh, there's a Demonic Tutor. I haven't seen that card yet in the games. Going to look up a card here. And I mean, things are looking really good for me so far. Again, I'm kind of dominating this. Will this end up in an 0-3 victory for Orc Quake? That is the big question here. Taking my time here. I mean, usually when you play a demonic, you know what to look up. But in this deck, 
Take some more time. I'm going to go through my hand there quickly to just uh, decide. I mean, it could, it depends on what you have in hand, obviously, what you're going to look up with the uh, Demonic Tutor. Like if I, for example, have a Rook Egg or multiple in hand, I'm sure I'm going to go for a Diamond Valley. But maybe I want to go for an Orc. You know, we haven't really seen Orc doing what it wants to do. It, 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 it had a role in the last game, but I would love it to shine a little bit more. Anyway, shuffling back up again, passing the turn. UP are dropping, land number six, another Knowledge Vault. So let's hope for Yoop that they don't have a quick shatter again. And I'm really kind of hoping for Yoop to, to get a little bit more lucky, you know, maybe finding that one Shivan. So six cards in hand for me. Drawing a card for turn, gonna go back, at, gonna go up to seven, I mean. Swinging in for three. So Yoop's gonna probably drop to 14 here. Exactly, gonna drop to 14. There's a Mox Jet. Tapping five. What are we gonna see for five? Taking a damage from the city. There's the Orr 6-6 six, six Trampler. And you appear using his Knowledge Vault on end step. Now remember with the Vault, you cannot see what card you put under it. So it's face down. It's gonna draw a card for turn. And now you really needs. Oh, he's just passing turn. I want to say now we really need something. That's nine damage staring down at you here. That would mean he would drop down to five. That would be disastrous for him. There's the attack. Needs to do something. Maybe if he has a disharmony. Although disharmony isn't great. Like he could steal the orc, but he cannot block the Idwin with the orc. He could steal the Edwin, but then he has to flip a coin to see if he can actually block with the Edwin. So it's, it's tough, but hey, at least a Disharmony would help him a little bit. It would stop the bleeding a little. I mean, I'm sure he's got to have something in hand, right? You really don't want to take nine here. He's going to tap three. I'm really expecting a Disharmony here. There's the Disharmony. Yeah, and he is going to steal the Itwin, and now he's got to flip a coin. This is so cool to see if it is allowed to block or not. If he wins the flip, it's ideal. He can block the Orc. But this is such a weird situation. Because usually the Orc wouldn't be able to attack with a creature that has power 3 or greater, but because we're already in combat when you play the Disharmony, the creature is already attacking. There's a coin. He's going to flip the coin. Then while it's up in the air, I have to say hats or tails. Oh, this is so cool. This is why I love to play these cards for these situations. He's going to flip it. We see it on camera, I guess. Whoa, and what is it? There we go. And now we just have to wait and see. I think he's got it. Yeah. I think he's won the toss, so I'm going to lose my Itwin Afrit to the Orc here. There's a Lightning Bolt, also going to lose the Orc. <laughs> this is this is the luck that Yoop kind of needed. You know, he's been, these two games haven't been really working out for him. Two games, be uh, you know, 0-2. And in this game three, he's, he's got to win it to stay in the match. And I think this is the kind of luck you need to maybe turn the tide. Oh, talking about luck. Look at this, another orc playing it out. So another problem here for Yoop. Just killed two of these huge creatures and now there's a new orc on the battlefield. A new problem for him. There's a Diamond Valley. That would have been quite nice the previous turn. I mean, this is tough here for Yoop. Tapping three, another Granite Gargoyle perhaps. That's not going to be a great blocker for the, uh, for the Orc. Looks like he's a little bit in the tank. Okay, there's a Stone Rain instead. Take care of the Sack Land. And he's going to use the Knowledge Vault again. So already three cards. He's going to Sack the Vault. Okay, so his hand was empty, I guess. 
So it's like a little, little ancestral recall action here from you. Gonna pass the turn, three cards in hand. Probably just gonna take six here. We'll drop to eight. There's the attack. Tapping four. What are we gonna see for four? Perhaps a Rook Egg. Gonna take a damage from the City of Brass again. Yep, there's the Rook Egg 03 creature from Fallen Empire. Uh, sorry, from Arabian Nights, of course, not Fallen Empires. Four cards in hand, passing turn. I mean, what Yub needs is just a Disharmony. He can Disharmony take over the Orc, sack it to the Diamond Valley. What he doesn't really need is a second Diamond Valley, but it is what it is. He's got uh, 246 lands there as well. So if he draws that uh, Shivan, he can play it out immediately. Three cards in hand for him. Five cards in hand for me. Attacking here with the Org. Does he have a Disharmony? That's the big question. He does. Playing Disharmony. So this is kind of what you want to do, right? Steal my Org. Sack it to the Valley. He's going to go back up to 16. Like this is ideal. Yeah, so he's going to steal it. He's going to eat it. There's nothing I can do about it. And then in my second main, going to go to 15, I guess, from the City of Brass. Playing an Earthquake for three. So I'm also going to drop it to 12. But of course, that Earthquake is quite nice because it means I'm going to kill my own Rook Egg, which means I'm going to get a 4-4 Flyer. So that's something. So I just keep creating creatures here to try to put pressure on you, but Jupiter's doing a really good job in killing all my threats. There we see a Shatter on my uh, Mox Jet. So Yoop on 11, I'm on 12. Tapping four. There's a Juggernaut. Okay, that's actually quite good here. Because I really don't want to trade my bird token for the Juggernaut. So I'm going to fly over it here. Five cards in hand. And I've got a bit of a mana issue now as well. Ooh, what's that card? I can't really see it because of the glare. Oh, it's a bolt in combination with the desert. Oh, oh, oh this is bad. In response, we're going to play a bolt on his juggernaut. He's going to eat it up. But yeah, Yoop is doing such a good job in, in just killing all my creatures. Like, he's killed an Itwit, he's killed an Orc, he's killed another Orc, he's killed my 4-4 four, four Flyer. I mean, it's pretty good. Passing the turn here. So both of us are kind of in top decking mode, I guess, now. I only have three lands, which is not a lot. Like, he destroyed that Fallen Empire's land of mine and, um, of course, the Mox Jet. Okay, there's a Diamond Valley, not really that good at the moment. Lots of Diamond Valleys in this game, by the way. It's a card you actually don't see that often in tournaments. There's a Badlands. Do I have a Rook Egg? Nope, I don't. Like, four mana allows me to cast a Rook Egg, but I guess I don't have it. And you also just playing a land, passing the turn. There's another Dwarven Ruins. Passing the turn. Oh, there's a Sheevan. Oh, 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 that's a problem. You see me going to my hand like instantly. Do I have a solution for this? My deck, I mean, I've got Fisher. Fisher is the best answer to this, uh, to this threat. I've got a few like mild solutions like a weakness or a paralyze, but that's, that's not going to do much. What am I going to do here? Okay, I do have a weakness. I mean, I guess it saves two damage, right? So now it's a... Uh, a 3-4 flyer. Oh, this is hilarious. So now it's a 1-3 flyer, but that, that's not really relevant because he can still pump it with all the red mana that he has. I'm on 12. He's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 red mana. So he can deal 8 next turn. Take another damage. Oh, look at me go. Another weakness. So now it's a 0-2. But it doesn't matter. He can still pump it up. So this kind of shows a problem with weakness. Yes, weakness is a good card, but not against these bigger creatures. Especially the Sheevan Dragon, because it's got that ability, pay one red, plus one, plus oh. That's a big problem here. 
This is hilarious. So my whole hand was full of weaknesses that I couldn't really use. Now this is game number uh, three here. And actually in this matchup, I'm now thinking about it. Weakness is not really good in this matchup. Because you can play a weakness on Juggernaut, but it still has three power. So it means you still cannot do anything with Orc. And I mean, you can play it on the Sheevan, but you see it doesn't really work here. You play it on the Gargoyle, it doesn't really do much. So here we see a Stone Rain taking care of the Diamond Valley, of course. There's the attack. Yeah, it's going to pump it up here. Taking so much damage. Going to go to five. Oh, this is funny. I've never seen a Sheevan with three weaknesses on it before. This is a little bit ridiculous. I'm gonna tap five. Do I have something? An orc on the board. But yeah, I lost my Diamond Valley as well. That Diamond Valley could have kept me alive one extra turn. But yeah, I'm gonna die here in game number three, I think. I mean, I've got one card in hand. I think there's nothing that can save me, but who knows? I mean, I don't play with this harmony like, uh, like you, so. There's another mountain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mountains. It can deal nine damage. Yeah, that's it. Oh, ho, ho. but I mean, it's pretty nice because I'm getting killed by a beautiful beta Shivan dragon, by the way. So I, 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 I don't really mind. But uh, what a comeback here from uh, from Yup. That Shivan did a lot of a lot of work for him here, uh, killing me in two turns basically with that one single Shivan. So he's got game number three in the bag, and that, ladies and gentlemen, means we are gonna go forward to game number four in this best of five battle. Game number four, here we go. So it's uh, the first game win here for you. It means it's one, two, and I'm on the play. Took a mulligan here, starting with a card less. So five in hand now after playing the Badlands. 20 life, passing the turn. And let's see what my opponent can do. Looks like he's got some coins there. I don't know. Are you, are you going to buy something, Yoop? <laughs> I have no idea why it's there. But anyway, there's a desert into Soul Ring. So that's a pretty good opener. Like next turn, he could start playing some creatures. There's a City of Brass from my side of the board and a pass. There's a Mountain Tapping 4. Oh, Juggernaut turn 2. Okay, I've got a Bolt. Good, 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 good. Or else it would have been a big problem. That's what I like about Juggernaut is you're creating the problems. You're saying, you know what? If you don't have an answer to this, start eating damage. The problem, of course, is that usually the opponent does have an answer. There's a second City of Breast. No, it went a free though for me. Passing the turn. Back to Yoop. There's another mountain for him. There's a Chain Lightning. Okay. Does it mean that he's got maybe a wheel in hand that he wants to like empty his hand quickly? Five for me, passing turn, missing a land drop. Ooh, it's not looking great for me here. Tapping another mountain, more damage perhaps. Granite Gargoyle, okay, 2-2 two, two Flyer. Passing the turn. Finding a mountain, tapping four, taking two from my own City of Brasses then. Going to go to 15. Rook Egg perhaps. Yep, there's the Rook Egg, 03. Four cards in hand. Pass, I guess. But I mean, my life total is it's going down pretty quickly. Already on 15, he can attack. Put me on 13. There's another Desert. So that's seven mana available for you. That's kind of scary. Going to drop to 13. Another Gargoyle. Oh, I need to find a way to kill my own egg so I can start blocking those 2-2 two -two Flyers. There's another mountain. I mean, Earthquake would at least be an answer here. Earthquake for three, kill my own Rook. Tapping four, drop to 11. Another Rook egg, oh, that's scary stuff. Do I have a weakness perhaps? Paralyze, yeah. It's not gonna do much, I, I fear. I mean, Yup Yup is really going quick with that Soul Ring. It's of course such a good card. It really helps him to ramp up, he can now Untap the Gargoyle and just attack with it as well. Yep, that's exactly what he does. Untapping here. I'm expecting a hit for four. That would mean I would go down to seven. And seven is so low against the red deck. That is very, very dangerous. There's the attack with one Gargoyle. Okay, at least keeping one Gargoyle at bay. That's something. 
He's on nine, passing the turn. Let's see if I can find a way to kill my own uh, Rook X here. Finding a Mox Jet first. I mean, what I need is just an Earthquake for three. Does mean I would drop to six though. Yep, there's the Earthquake. Uh, only one card in hand going at to six. At least I get two birds. I kind of feel like I have to do this. If I do nothing, I'm gonna die. So, gotta do something here. It's not ideal, but hey, it is what it is. So I think two of these tokens now. Yep, so there are my two birds. One card in hand. So I should change the dice there exactly to one. That's what I'm doing right now, so that's something. More coins for my opponent, by the way. <laughs> I, I think they're all old guilders, I think. It's old uh, Dutch money. I think we were discussing it during the match. Oh, man, look at that chain lightning. Going to put me on three. Oh, man, this is so bad. Is he going to make it a 2-2? Two -two? After going two games down, you know, fighting for survival, it could make it into a 2-2. Two -two. That would mean we would go into an old decisive game number five. Tapping three here. There's an it winner freak. What I really need now is that Diamond Valley. I mean, I cannot attack here, right? That would be way too risky. And yeah, I guess my, my opponent Jupiter is, is counting his Dutch money. I have no idea why. But um, yeah, I've got the it winner freak here. And things are looking really good for him. Like... He can just wait. Just keep his creatures untapped. And then he can just, you know, burn me out. It looks like I want to, considering attacking here, the thing that I'm thinking about is, does it really matter if I am on one or on three? The answer is no. But, I mean, this is risky. Because then if you can find... Yeah, he can just block, right? He's got enough mana. So I wonder what my plan here is. It's now a 2-6. Oh, he's going to kill it. He's got deserts as well. Why did I attack? Why did I do this? Is there a bigger plan? No, there's not a bigger plan. Okay. I think I just made a mistake here. I think I, I didn't think about the double desert. This was just a really bad attack from my side of the board. Weird. Maybe I got distracted by all the coins there on the side of my opponent's uh, screen. I have no idea. But this was a very poor attack. Probably gonna... Yeah, he's gonna kill me anyway. So in, in the end, in the end, it didn't really matter. But um, that was a very stupid attack. But yeah, that fireball here making it into a 2-2. Two -two, and that means we're gonna have a game number five. Am I actually gonna lose this match after winning the first two games? Wow, that would be... Uh, that would be a big hit for my for my belief in self-esteem, you know. Uh, I believe in Orc Quake. Anyway, we're going to find out in game number five. Game number five. Here we go. The big decider. Come on, Orcs. I mean, I was up two games. What happened? Started with Dwarven Ruins. Ever since you've started to bring those coins in, and I still don't know why they're there. That is that is what's messing me up, You Get those coins out of there. Untapping my land, playing another basic, passing the turn. There's a desert. And so we saw this in the previous game as well, right? We're not doing that much in the early stages of the match. At least I'm playing out my it win here, turn three. That's, uh, that's all I can ask for, three, six. I can start dealing some damage. And the Yoop's life total should be on 20, by the way, not on 17. There's a mountain. And a pass. There's the attack. So I guess now he's going to go to 17. Exactly. Didn't take any damage yet. There's a uh, swamp. So finding my lance here. Am I going to play a rook egg? So this is kind of nice to see. You know, turn 3, it win a free. Turn 4, rook egg. Turn 5, orc, probably. Question. That would be really sweet. You appear now going to play something out as well for 4. There's an icy manipulator. Really good card, but not going to help him just yet. Doesn't have the one mana left to activate it, so... 
I can at least still attack for three. Gonna put him on 14 in that case. Yeah, attacking here with the Edwin. That means he's gonna drop here to 14. Passing the turn though, no land drop, no orc, no shatter on the uh, icy. Land number five here for Yoop. I mean, I wonder what he's gonna bring to the table here, tapping the mountain for a red. Chain lightning, okay. Interesting, because now I can... Okay, so what he's going to do is going to chain on my Edwin, probably. But now I can chain my own Rook Egg, right? But you can see me thinking here. I think I need to go on a Chain Lightning course, because I'm seeing myself making so many mistakes when I play against Chain Lightning. This is getting kind of ridiculous. Because if I chain myself, then I am the new target and I can choose not to send it back. I think that's how it works. Anyway, he's playing another bolt to, uh, to destroy the Edwin and now I'm bolting my own egg. So, I mean, this bolt is kind of a wasted bolt. I could have chained it. I think. Anyway, I am doing some good business here, shattering the IC as well. So at the end, I'm left with a 4-4 flyer, and that's pretty good. So I'm going to attack, of course, Yupi. You're going to drop to 10. Playing a City of Brass, going to tap 5, going to take a damage, go to 19. Oh, there's the Orc! 6-6 six, six Powerhouse! It's looking really good for me. I can attack for 10 next turn and actually take the game and the match. There is a Diamond Valley, though. If he's got one of those Disharmonies... That could ruin my plans. Tapping three, or are we going to see a granite gargoyle? Ooh, a wheel of fortune. Going to lose a lightning bolt and a shatter. He's going to lose two shatters and a mountain. But I mean, Yoop needs a really, really good draw. He already had his land drop as well, so... What he needs, I mean, the ideal scenario for him would be a mox. You know, drop the mox, keep the disharmony in hand. And then uh, steal the orc when it's attacking. Just passing the turn here, though. Oh, it's looking bad here for you. Maybe if he has double bolt. Could kill at least a 6-6. Six, six. There's the attack for 10. Is this going to be the victory? Or does you, uh, can you find some kind of way out of this? There's one bolt. Does he have a second one? Nope, there's not. Winning here. Game number five with the Orc. Yeah, taking the victory. Man, for a moment there, when he played that first bolt, I thought, do you have a second? Really? Do you have a second bolt? Anyway, Orc Quake is victorious. And I can tell you, it is really fun to play with these big Orcs. It is just, it is cool. I think the deck is not really balanced um but i like it i like it um let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions what are things you would do different and uh please you know be nice to me i know i've made some mistakes with the chain lightning i think what i should have done especially in that last game was a nice uh, example of that he plays a chain lightning i have that rook egg out i can play two red target my own egg right and then then i because i targeted something that i own i can decide if I want to then uh, uh, play the Chain Lightning again. So it's not up to my opponent, it's then up to me because I've targeted something that I own, um, I think. You know, can you still follow me? Anyway, um, I should have done that, definitely. So always learning, and that's one of the things I like so much about this game. Even though I've been playing it for so long, I am still learning. Anyway, I hope you've, well, not learned something, maybe you did, but I hope you've enjoyed this episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And before you go, please leave a like, share this, and uh, leave a comment as well. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And talking about moving forward, we also have our very own Patreon program. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks to find out how you can become a patron of the show and help me continue making this content for you. So if you've enjoyed it, please take a moment to check out our Patreon program. And the cool thing is it already starts for just $1 a month. And for that dollar, you get access 
to the Timmy Talks Patreon, uh, sorry, Discord, I should say, of course, also to the Patreon page, but also to the exclusive Discord. It's only for channel members and patrons. And your name will also be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? 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 Somebody can see.